Welcome, everyone, and I hope you will find this uh, very interesting. So let me shrink my other little panel here. So what I want to first tell you is the way I'm going to run this. If you have questions, you, know, you certainly type them into text chat. Um, I will pause periodically to check text chat to see what questions you have. Uh, we are also going to ask for a volunteer from the audience. So if you happen to have another phone available to you, if you're listening to this on your office phone and you have your cell phone, We'll do that in about the middle of this presentation. And uh, I will be sending you copies of the slides with the link to the recorded webinar as well, because there's a couple of links in here that you may want to get access to uh, from the slides. So uh, with that being said, let me move my panel over and open up my PowerPoint. Uh, so I am the CEO and founder of Knowledge Shift. Knowledge Shift is a training technology company. We do a host of different types of um, applications around the rapid e-learning tools, like rapid intake, uh, but we also teach people how to use um, some of the different technologies that are out there, and we host a um, uh, more or less bi-weekly radio show called Training Tech Talk that is on uh, Blog Talk Radio, and so if you ever want to be a guest on our show, we could, we're always open to guests on our show or topics that you want to have covered, we'd be happy to do that. But about four years ago, we got into the mobile space and recognize that that mobility and mobile phones was just going to keep growing and growing and growing, and boy, it sure has. And so one of the things that I think people really get uh, away from or forget about is that phones have voice and audio capabilities. Every phone has voice and audio capabilities. So I'm going to talk about you know all of that. And, and with Siri coming out, so I don't know how many of you actually have um, a Siri device, which people are having a lot of fun with today. But Siri really came from an um, old, old technology platform called Chatbots. And uh, so I'm going to shrink my uh, PowerPoint for a second here, because I'm going to kind of give you the evolution of how, how we came into utilizing this technology and where the roots of this platform came from. So I don't know if some of you are familiar with Chatbots, but here there's, there's a link in the PowerPoint slides that will take you to this web page. So don't worry about writing this down. And this is Eliza. So Eliza was actually um, created probably, in, I think, in the 60s. Uh, and she kind of acts like a psychotherapist, you know, asking you questions back and forth. And so uh, this website has actually created a kind of a fun version of this. So she's saying, hello, my name is Eliza. How may I help you? And I'll say, like, where are you? And uh, so, like, if I were talking to Siri, Siri would be saying something back to me or asking, you know, where do I want to go or what do I want to do? And so she replies back, why are you interested in whether I am or not? So it doesn't quite make sense. But what this, this technology really was was the birth of, kind of this um, uh, um, artificial intelligence. And so artificial intelligence is going to be built into more and more different technology platforms out there. But the mobile world and the mobile space has been using voice recognition. And what Siri is, is a combination of voice recognition and artificial intelligence. And so what I'm going to be showing you are kind of something that's in between a, a kind of a Siri type of technology and the Eliza type technology. And, and there's a lot of reasons why this technology is working very well. Um, so I'm going to get into that. So let me open up my slides again. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background as far as the why this technology has some solid kind of research behind it. Uh, I'm going to be presenting you with different case studies around how organizations today are using voice and audio technologies. And then we're going to run that little test drive with a volunteer from our audience. And then I'll take a, uh, a look into what we call our IVR suite or studio, where all of this content is managed and built and distributed. Um, so first off, if you think about simulation-based training, you know that to me could be almost called the nirvana of training. Uh, I was once at, had the pleasure of going to a real flight simulator at Southwest Airlines. And if you could make training that real, uh, it, it was amazing. Of course, each simulator cost $10 million, and you know not all of us have that kind of budget. Uh, but what simulations do is they really spark the learner's interest. Uh, they foster greater effort on the role of the learner to be engaged and be involved. And I'm going to show you how it can also guide the learner through a simulated experience, but also a real experience. Because our, our audio function of the phone 
can act as an audio guide while you're doing a real live learning activity. Um, I know you probably can't read these slides very well, and that's why I'm sending you a copy of them, but I wanted to, again, point out some of this research that's been done around the benefits of simulations. And so uh, let me get my little uh, drawing tool out here. Um, okay, let my screen get refreshed here. Uh, doesn't like my drawing tool. <laughs> Hold on here. <coughs> Let me see if I just go to the pen. That's better. Nope, didn't like that either. Um, all right, so while my screen's refreshing to my slides, let me uh, stop and ask, oh, there we go. Uh, do any of you currently use any kind of simulation-based training in, uh, in your training today? Do you just want to type that into text chat? Nobody? <laughs> OK. Uh, so let me go into, let me hide this again. So in simulation-based training, a lot of times people think there's a cost challenge involved in that. And what I'm going to show you, using voice tools, that's not necessarily the case, because it's not as expensive to change an audio file. It's not heavily, heavily using graphics. Uh, so you, these voice simulations can act as a very real like person talking to you. So the cost issue is not necessarily a big concern. Also looking at the uh, shaping of the social environment um, under an industry trends. Communication technologies are being incorporated more frequently in simulations. So again, just because of the sheer fact that everybody, almost everybody, has access to a phone these days, why not leverage that to conduct some of this um, training engagement? So uh, let me go to my next slide. So what I'm going to talk about, uh, this is kind of the progression of how we, uh, OK, something's going on here in my screen. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is the progression of how we built these audio tools. So our history kind of came from, OK, hold on. Let me stop and take some questions. All right. Um, There we go. All right, let me check your questions out. OK. And I have to stretch my panel out here. Hold on. Yeah, my question panel is stuck. <laughs> OK, hold on. All right, full screen mode. Yep, yep, yep. OK. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, record or not recording podcast content, simulations, which will be role playing, surveys, and then audio tools. So let me get these questions out here. Uh, and I'm having trouble getting my screen to stretch so I can see these questions. Okay, uh, let me look here. All right. So I see some of you are using uh, simulations. Some of you are using Captivate to do that. Uh, video simulations, Lectora. Great. Um, all right. And let me check to see if there's any questions before I go on. Does, OK, yeah, that counts. Sales training, good. OK, all right. So let me um, first talk about the evolution. So four years ago when we got into mobile, we, you know, we were doing a lot of podcasting, and we still do a lot of podcasting. And uh, one of the things that uh, always came up during podcasting uh, classes and things like that is how do I track how much of the, the information somebody listened to? And you really can't track true podcasting, how much somebody's consumed, unless maybe you ask them some questions. Uh, or you had them take a test or something like that. Um, but with this technology that I'm going to show you, you can actually measure how much audio content somebody consumed because we're utilizing kind of an older technology platform, uh, IVR, or Interactive Voice Response Systems. Um, and we all probably encounter these all the time. Uh, anytime we call make a reservation or call 
schedule a doctor's appointment, call into a major corporation that has, you know, branching to different phone systems. And so this actually can track because it's using this older technology. Um, and then we went from there to role playing because we said, now that we can get audio content in here and track it, is there a way to break it up into a script so that part of the conversation is preloaded and then the other part the user provides in their conversation with the simulator. And then from there we went to surveys and then the last thing we just added uh, this fall was audio tours. So I'm going to show you uh, some examples of that uh, right now. Uh, so the first one I'm going to start with is a company called Case New Holland. So some of you are probably familiar with Case New Holland. Um, they actually manufacture large uh, agricultural equipment and construction equipment, and they sell all of their equipment through dealers. And their, and their dealers actually sell competitive equipment as well. So they wanted to find some way to be top of mind and provide them with some kind of uh, marketing message in an easy way that gets to them very quickly. And their first thought was, let's do something uh, on a mobile device. Well, three years ago, that was as of today, it's still kind of a challenge if you don't know what device they have and what their device is capable of. And so we decided to go with providing a, an audio component to that just by pushing out a marketing message of, you know, a tip, you know, marketing tips, sales tips. So they started that with 50 dealers. It's now expanded to over 900 dealers. And um, what they have found is because they can actually track how much of that information the dealer listens to, and they can actually put polling questions at the end of that audio broadcast that asks them, you know, what kind of information do you want to, want to hear next week? Uh, is there something that, you know, you want us to uh, make sure that we include, or is there any kind of competitive rate sheets that you want us to provide to you? So they're asking them all these great polling questions within the podcast that they're pushing out to their phones each month. So that has worked so well that now they're adding something called a guided walk around. So the guided walk around is um, using the audio functionality of this system. To, they do something all the time called guided walk around. So they're literally standing in front of the construction equipment or the tractor that they've manufactured, and somebody physically walks them around and shows them all the new features of this um, product. So using the phone now, you can actually do a guided tour just by using audio prompts. Like back in the old days, remember the old Walkmans? You know, people used to wear those in the museums and would go through a certain series of steps or di different displays, and they would hear an audio description. We're using the phones today to do the same thing, but it's very human. It feels like you're having this conversation with someone. And so there's a lot of different training applications where you can guide somebody step by step on how to do something. And all of that is tracked. You can tell how many steps somebody used uh, in the system. Uh, so some of the other examples. Now, chances are I would probably call uh, a tow truck <laughs> if I had my phone. But let's say you want to change the tire yourself. You can do that by just dialing a number saying, you know, help me, guide me through changing my tire, you know, if you don't have your manual there. Uh, another one would be fixing a piece of equipment. Um, and we also have currently uh, some customers looking at it, even navigating through a website. You know, having a number to dial to say, first, if you're looking for this, first go here, click there, and audibly walk them through how to do that. So it's very simple to build that kind of uh, platform, but it feels like you're having this real conversation with someone because a real human actually recorded all those steps. Uh, so let me first stop and uh, see if there's any questions on the first two examples that I talked about. Uh, are images or video provided? Uh, no. Uh, you can do that. Uh, and again, we're trying to build this so that you don't have to have a smartphone. But if you know the user does have a smartphone, you can provide video or images with that. Or if they're sitting at a computer, you could do that as well. But we're, we're building these a lot with the assumption that we don't know if the user has a smartphone. Uh, yes, yeah, people do use YouTube a lot, too. Um, what companies are doing this? So Case New Holland is doing it. We're talking right now with uh, Caterpillar and Kamatsu or some other companies. There's some retailers that we're talking to about this. 
uh, large suppliers of um, a, a dialysis uh, company that has a lot of doctors that they're trying to teach how to use a new website, and doctors don't want to go through training. So they're, they're saying they're very used to using the phone, so the doctors are going to use the, the phone audio tour to help them navigate through this new website that they're building. Um, let me answer a few more questions. Is there a specific number? Yes, you can assign a specific number that the user dials. to act, And then in that number, you can even have an interactive menu that says press 1 for this audio tour, press 2 for this podcast. You, know, you can set it up to access you know, 99 options if you want uh, to give that user access. Uh, we use the tech walk through in the Air Force. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the concept has been around for a while, but I don't think people have thought about using their phone to do this, and that's why you know it's it's not rocket science, but nobody's you know really been using it to leverage voice that well. Um, do I have any customers whose audience is call centers? Yes, um, we actually have a, a a reseller of ours has over 25 call centers that they have been doing uh, training with, and it's it's worked quite well for them, uh, both inbound and outbound calls. Uh, so for, uh, let me try to get to a couple more questions here. So for instance, a manufacturer, something that people have put together at home? Yes, exactly. So if you're trying to put your wireless router together, you're put, trying to put your new flat screen TV up with your HDMI cable uh, and your Blu-ray box, yes, you could have something created that walks them step by step through that. Uh, what platform do you conduct the IVRs on? I will be showing you that, good question. And then uh, what is the tracking tool? How is the data collected? So I'll be showing you all of that. So let me, uh, I'm going to stop looking at questions now and move on. Those are all great questions, and hopefully I'll be able to answer all of those. So probably the most uh, common uh, application people are using this for is sales training. Uh, <laughs> we have built invoice talent. Uh, so sales training is probably the most common, and, and Dell Computers uh, is one of our clients using it for their international sales force, so this will handle international calls as well. Uh, but they want a consistency in messaging and handling, you know, competitive information. How do you handle objections? All of that, all of that information that might be a little bit different globally, and so they're building different versions of the scripts. But they have a large sales force that they're trying to manage. So we've added an additional component that managers can log into a web portal and look to see which of their employees have done which simulations and then listen to them versus right now we have kind of a kind of on the low end we can actually automatically email the file to you and they and the Dell says well we don't want the files emailed to all the managers because they may not have time to listen to it in their email is there a way we can send it to a central portal where they can log in and manage their staff that way so we've actually built out this other kind of customized portal but now we're making it as an add-on uh, feature to the system. Because if you are managing a lot of people, that would be nice to kind of just see what kind of content they're accessing uh, when they have time to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask for a volunteer. I'm going to count to three. And this volunteer is actually going to have, I'm going to send a simulation to your phone. And it's going to, so I'm going to ask for your phone number. And I'll actually have the simulator call your phone, and I want to give you a little background of who you're going to be talking to so that if you volunteer, you know what you're getting into. <laughs> so we actually did a live demonstration. I'm based in Chicago, and Chicago is well known for the fact that it has a multitude of improv professionals. So I thought, why not have a live audience, have the audience give us content for a role play to build on the fly, and then have somebody from the audience call the simulator and talk to the character. So we did this uh, about six months ago. And so the premise was, you know, first the audience was to give us an idea on, you know, let's, let's think of something to sell. You know, you're going to be a salesperson. What do you want to sell? So the audience was shouting out different ideas. And the improv professional says, oh, I heard alligator shoes. All right, so, the, so you're going to be selling alligator shoes. And so the next question is, well, who are you selling these to? And so, of course, again, shouting out all kinds of ideas. And the improv said, uh, <laughs> hold on, you're cheating. I'm going to count to three. Uh, the improv heard, oh, nuns. So you're going to have to sell alligator shoes to a nun. All right, so I'm going to count to three. And don't put your phone number up until I count to three. And whatever phone number appears first, that's the one I'm going to pick. So ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so I see, uh, oh, is that the poll number? Eight? Okay. Because I'm not, I'm not going to count uh, whoever this name is, B-U-C, I can't see your whole name. Um, so 845, if I can read it, 845-418. I think I'm missing a number, 845-418-14, okay, 1466. Boy, I need some new glasses. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second here so I... Uh, get access to my little simulator. And I'm going to go into this, this IVR studio and type in, so whoever this is, your number is 845-418-1466. So hopefully that's not the same phone that you're on right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be typing your phone number into the simulator. And your phone's going to ring, so answer your phone, and uh, you'll hear instructions about, you know, like like we did this in our live environment, and then you'll hear the nun start talking to you about selling these shoes. So uh, let's see, I want to make sure I have this number right because I can't tell if you're not taking the call. <laughs> Pick me, nice. So eight four five four one eight one four six six. All right, I'm going to hit click, and your phone should start to ring. In a second here. So while they're doing this call, I'm going to talk about a couple more case studies, a couple other features that we've built on uh, the system. And then when they get done talking on the phone, OK, it's connected. All right, so I'm going to sh uh, share my screen again. So when they come back on the call, um, we'll be able to hear if they sold those shoes to the nun. Uh, so not like putting them on the spot or anything. <laughs> so okay, sorry, and and you know you I'll give everybody access to some other role plays later on. You can all try this later on, uh, but um, this will be fun to see how they do this. So, uh, so the other thing that we added on, uh, okay, so we have a large retailer that has eighteen hundred stores, and there's. Their staff isn't very big, so they don't have a dedicated trainer. But they have, it's very important for them to have everybody trained on how to greet the customer when they walk in the door. It's, it's very structured, and they all have to say the same thing. Uh, uh, yes, we do have a site set up. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so they were doing roll-to-roll, face-to-face -roll, uh, -face role playing. Their staff just couldn't handle the store managers, was too busy to consistently do this on a regular basis. Then they switched to conference calls where they would have like 200 people on a conference call trying to do role playing. That wasn't doing it. So now they're using the, um, the simulator to do the role playing. But because they have so many people doing these, they said, gee, is there some way that you could score the call? Because our managers won't always get to listening to it. And by the time they listen to it and critique them, a lot of time might have gone by. So now we're taking a little bit more of that Siri-like technology into place where the system will actually transfer or take uh, translate what you say verbally into text. And so once that call is recorded, it will translate it into text. And then we've built a, a whole other platform where it takes that text into a database. And the database can do a keyword search. So they've assigned a point value to different keywords that they should be saying in each part of the script when they respond to the simulator. This helps them then score the call, and they can look at different regions, different store managers to see who's, who has the lower uh, role-playing scores. And then they'll listen to the actual file and provide feedback. So this helps them manage a large volume of people in a way that helps them attach at least a tangible number to what's going on within that role-play. You know, we, and we still encourage that they do still listen to the call, but this helps them kind of address where their uh, challenges are the most very quickly. Uh, so is my caller done? Can you type into text chat if you're done? Oh, I got to scroll my text down. Yeah, OK. All right, so uh, let me stop sharing here. And I'm going to pull up the audio file that they just did. So let me get out of my PowerPoint here. And then I'm going to play it for you over speakerphone. Did you sell her the shoes? 
<laughs> All right, let's see here. Where's my little get my little windows shrunk so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, let's see if I have the right file first. Hello, this is a Mother Mary Barnista, and I'm interested in getting some new shoes. Uh, Hold on. I want to make sure this is the right file. Okay, let me uh, start over here. So I'm going to put my phone on speakerphone, and hopefully you can hear that. Hold on, let me replay it. Hello, this is a Mother Mary Barnista, and I'm interested in getting some new shoes. Uh, what, what do you have in the way of shoes there? Yeah, folks, yeah. Yeah, let me that. Oh, now, I've, I've taken a vow of poverty, and uh, I, I need to know, do you, is that one special? Is, that, is there a good price you can give me? The price is your coach of all just the oh, I, I just don't know. I mean, where an alligator shoes? I'm, I'm concerned about their flexibility and comfort. I've got a lot of praying and running around to feed the sick and, and help the poor. And uh, I just, I don't want them to bless first. Alexia. Oh, you sold me. Send me a pair of your alligator shoes. And send me your name that I may pray for you just a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, uh, I'll download that recording so you can hear it uh, easier when you guys get all the slides. But very good. You, you know, you sold the shoes to the nun, and she'll pray for you just a little bit. <laughs> yes, it was It was a, uh, shall we say, male-enhanced voice uh, doing that. Um, but that was something we did on the fly. So that's how easy this is to use. Of course, we had very talented improvisers that could write that quickly, and they recorded it and uploaded it into the system. So uh, as, as long as I'm in here already, so what... Um, I'm going to go to my little screen. So this is the Knowledge Shift IVR Studio. So this is where we build all of the um, scripts or assemble all of the audio content. So all of the original audio is recorded in uh, something called Audacity, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with or probably use. It's a free uh, audio. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Yes. All right. Um, so it's a, so we use Audacity to originally record the audio content. So what I've done is I've gotten into this. Um, move this over here. Uh, this is our IVR studio. So I have cloned an already created role play. Um, right now we're actually launching a whole new website for kids that have autism to help them practice social conversations. So I've actually just copied one of those. This is a role play where they have to guess, when they hear somebody saying something, they have to guess what emotion they have. So I'm just going to go in here and edit that to show you how these are built. So you just provide it with a title. And again, you do not need to be a programmer to do this. If you, have, if you can build a PowerPoint presentation, you can build these simulations in this tool. Um, so basically, like any training content, you might Think about storyboarding it out, out, writing it out, or writing a script. So you see the entire script of what the audio recording is in here. And then they're actually saved as WAV files because we're, old, we're using this older IVR technology, but the recorded calls are saved as MP3s. So the original source of your audio content that you're uploading in the system has to be a WAV file. Yes, this is the Knowledge Shift uh, IVR Studio. Can you guys see it? Yes, this works with Audacity, correct. Uh, so you would first record an Audacity, save the audio file. Now let's say I want to change this audio file. So I'm just going to click on Edit. And this is where I actually copied and pasted the script content in here. So I'm using what they call the question text. I check the box, use a WAV file, because that's what we're going to be uploading. And these are all the different types of questions. So this is why when I say you can do polling, you can do surveys, it captures what you say in an audio file. It can capture what's called an extended recording. So if you're talking a long, long, long time, 
and getting a lot of feedback, you can do that. You can uh, have somebody enter a digit. So if you're asking somebody to put in their employee ID first, they can do that. So you choose what, these are all built into the system already. So with this first one, it's only a, a prompt because I'm just giving them instructions on what's going to happen. And so now I can go and upload my WAV file. So I would just go up, find out where that was, pull it back into the tool and hit save. Um, but I can also tell it to skip somewhere. Let's say I'm, I'm asking them a yes, no question. I can then say, um, here, I'll just show you one of those. Then the system's going to say, oh, OK. If they say yes, where do you want me to branch to? If they say no, where am I going to branch to? The sound just went off. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Oh, OK. Somebody's phone's not working or something. OK, thank you. Um, so again, I can branch, or if I did multiple choice. And what's really nice about this, let's say I said yes or no. And they say, oh, I'm sorry you're having trouble, or that's great. Can I tell you more information? So again, writing the script in a way is if you're really having a conversation is the real key to the success. And that really keeps people engaged at a very emotional level. If you're getting people emotionally involved, that training is going to stick better. They're going, if it's a survey, chances are they're going to complete the survey uh, and, and go through the entire survey because it feels like they're having a conversation with them. Uh, OK, so uh, this is how you actually get the files into uh, the simulator. So let me switch this back to uh, prompt. Yes, I understand that. And so it's just a series of building all these different scripts. And so, the, uh, so then you build this, and then you can actually test it right within the system um, after you're done building it. So let me get back to my main screen. So here. You know, uh, I'm going to be sending you a link to uh, a demo page that you can try a variety of these. But I can test it right here within the system. So I just click on this test, what we call servos. And I can put in the phone number where I want to test it from. I just click this button. Just like our simulation with the nun that they just had, it's going to send it right to my phone. And I can test that out to see if it works correctly. So the same thing gets built for if I had a, uh, let's say, a podcast. So the podcast, I just record it in Audacity, upload it into the system. And I think I've got a, an example of that plus a, uh, bran here, let me show you the branching demo first. So if I go in this branching demo, you'll see how you can do a uh, pretty sophisticated branching. So this is a... Uh, oh, a doctor's survey. So they were, you know, we just created this as a demo for a survey in a doctor's office. And on a scale of one to five, you know, how is your service? And so one was extremely poor, so it's going to skip down to question two. It says, thank you for your response. Let's probe a little deeper. So it allows you to say, versus just capturing that as a poor score and not doing anything about it, now let's, let's really do something about it if, um, if you felt poorly about that service. Uh, so let me check some of these questions. So it recognizes the voice as either correct or not. Uh, OK. What it does, you're not physically saying, yes, you know, you're telling it on their, by pressing a button on your keypad. Button one is extremely poor. Button two is less than average. Button three and four, et cetera. So the voice tells you, on a scale of one to five, one being poor, how did you feel about this service? So you're pressing the physical button on your phone. Uh, it, it will, though, pick up yes or no. If you just put in yes or no questions, it will uh, voice recognize a yes or no response. Uh, is there a way to link this from an LMS? Uh, we don't have anybody doing it today, but you can export all of the reporting functionality uh, into uh, a database and then put it into your LMS. Uh, so no, it doesn't have voice recognition today, uh, except for the yes, no. And again, it does record your voice. Uh, great. OK, so if I'm an agent in a call center, I don't have a direct line. Ah, I will show you how to do that uh, in a second here. So there's three ways that you actually give people access to your uh, simulations or surveys. So the first way is, if I just go to my home button here, is we assign a toll-free number to every single account that we set up. So you can give somebody a number to dial to say, call this number. So if they're in a call center, 
They can just call a number directly. Uh, I don't have a direct line phone number. Yeah. So I can just dial a number, and in that number, you can create an interactive menu where you press different numbers to get to different simulations. So that's the first way that you can do that. The second way is what I did with our uh, conversation with the nun, the toll-free number for each. Uh, yeah, toll-free number for each account, and then you can buy additional numbers. Is this uh, click-to-call feature? Uh, okay, my mouse doesn't want to move. Hold on. All right, so what's called a click-to-call? So I can create a link that sits in an email that's embedded in a course that um, is on a web page that they click on to access that file or have the system call them. So here I have a point question demo. This is just a way to um, handle uh, objections. It's like a generic example of that. So I um, can create a link just by clicking on this HTML button. I'm going to get, I don't know how to code in HTML. I don't want to know how to code in HTML. I've, I've got people that can do that. Uh, but I can create it in this wizard that creates it for me. And all I have to do is copy and paste this string of HTTP blah, blah, blah. And then I can open up, say, an email and put it in as a hyperlink in an email, put it in as a hyperlink into a PowerPoint, a Word document, a website, et cetera, et cetera. So I can create a hyperlink. Uh, yeah, my machine is moving very slow on this. Let me uh, stop sharing, see if it lets me add this, and I'll show you what it does. All right, so let me... <laughs> Hold on. Now let me see if there's any questions while it's still chugging away here. Um, let's see if I missed any here. Okay, so let me build this link. Okay, I'm going to send it to myself. You can't see what I'm doing right now, so just bear with me. And I'm not hiding it because <laughs> we can see what I'm doing. Uh, create this link. Um, all right. So let me. If I could spell right, that would help too. Create this link. All right. So let me share again. Let's see if my machine will speed up here. All right. So I'm just going to highlight the word link, insert, hyperlink, and then control V to paste that in there. So when somebody gets this email, and I'll show you what happens when I go back into my main screen. I'll just click my little test link. So it, it comes to them in an email. It says click this link. So when they do that, I'll just go into my little test button here and simulate that a little bit. So I'm going to get a box that pops open in my computer. Where'd it go? Here we go. I put in my phone number then and hit click and it calls me. So that's the second way that you can give people access to the content. Uh, the third way is this voice broadcast. So this is what Case New Holland is doing. They're actually scheduling a broadcast of that marketing message because they have all the dealer's phone numbers. They've uploaded them into here through a spreadsheet and they're doing a push call to them. So the dealers know, oh, this a um, this uh, uh, caller ID, I know it's coming from Case New Holland. Oh, it's probably our monthly marketing message. And so you can set it up so that it either, if their voicemail kicks in, nothing happens, or you can give them a different message, or you can redial. So I want to use an existing voice broadcast or servo or simulation that I've already put in there. So it will pre-populate all of those scripts that I already have in the system, and I just pick which one I want, go into the next step. And I can either pull up one of my groups that I've preloaded in here. So I have a little demo group. And then I just say, OK, when do I want to schedule this? And I can choose the day and the weeks, the time of day. And I can send out um, to nine simultaneous calls at a time. So it actually goes pretty fast. But um, uh, so it will do that uh, all at once. And then you can actually watch that the calls go out. If you have a very large uh, group of people you're sending to, you can sit there and watch who's getting the call and when it's getting picked up. 
So the system will track, if they answered it live, how much of that information they listened to, and any questions, polling questions or voice response questions you ask for, that's all captured in there. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that uh, cost question uh, towards the end here. Thank you. How do you charge for the system? OK, yeah, I'm going to answer all that. Yes, it does uh, support soft phones as well. Uh, so again, this is the, the other way. So the other way that we've actually created that we, we didn't realize people wanted access to, but now I can see why, is if I go to our site, which is knowledgeshift.net, under the voice simulations tab, you can all access this. We have something called Mobi Role Play. There's even some under uh, candidate screening. If you have somebody who has autism in your family, you could go to the autism one. But uh, I'll just go to the Mobi Role Play option. And we've built this drop-down list of different role plays that you can pick from that we've pre-built. Then you put in your email address, because what's going to happen is when you're done with that call, it's going to send you Gonna, that was good English. It's going to send you <laughs> the recorded call so you can hear what it sounded like. So you just put in the phone number where you want to do the simulation from. Uh, somebody said they lost audio again. Um, but I wanted to also show you this does work from any mobile phone. So if you really want to kind of add visuals to it, I'm going to I have actually have this handy dandy little tool connected to my uh, computer. This is actually my BlackBerry. Yes, I'm still using a BlackBerry, people. Sorry. <laughs> I do have Android devices and I iOS, but I want to show you for my BlackBerry because this tool only works with BlackBerry. So I'm going to go to my browser. And again, I can just access that same interactive menu and pick from a series of role plays. And right from my mobile phone, Put in my email address, or I, I could leave that field out. I don't have to put that in there, but if I want a copy of it, I'll put it in there. And then the phone number, my mobile phone number, is going to call my mobile phone directly, so I can practice that right from my mobile phone. So this is just simple HTML with a little bit of Java code running in the back. So some of our customers have actually asked us to give them this feature as well, that they're putting behind a private um, web page for their uh, employees to access. So that's another way that we've actually created and, and we've actually had to copyright it because we have some source code sitting on there. So, But that's the other way that you can give people access to um, the audio content. So any questions on how you actually get people access to um, the simulations? OK, so now let me go back to my PowerPoint slides. Uh, let's see if I skipped any. Uh, other examples, again, insurance companies are using this a lot for agent training. We talked about call centers uh, a little bit. Um, restaurants are using this to practice how to take a phone reservation. We even have somebody that's thinking of using it for uh, secret shoppers. Instead of doing it with a live person, they're going to have people practice it first with the simulator. So a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, call center today is that uh, reseller of ours it's, has it in 25 call centers. They call it the assault role play simulator, which is, <laughs> I think it's a little, you know, a strong language. But hey, you know, they, they want to make sure they get it done well. And then, of course, you can add it into uh, blended learning as well. Uh, just real quick, we are creating a whole speech therapy track for people that have either suffered a stroke, uh, for kids that have autism, and we're also talking to the military about potentially using it for traumatic brain injuries or PTSD. So somebody asked about the cost of this. So it's like a phone plan because you know we don't care how many scripts you have or how many users are using the system because our costs are tied to that phone time, that switching box. That's what that costs us money is that switching box. So we're doing it like a phone plan based upon minutes that you use it. So kind of that starter package is a one-time setup fee, and around 500 monthly minutes is $199. So. So you can see it's not a huge investment at all to develop a very engaging, interactive experience that everybody can access from a phone. Everybody knows how to use a phone. It's kind of that utility of you know common, common technology that everybody has kind of an equal playing field on. Uh, the silver and gold setup fees 
actually incorporate that other uh, package that we originally built built for Dell and for that retailer with the keyword search database tool. So if you have a lot of people you're trying to manage and you want to have a, a better kind of client customer management tool, um, there's an add-on for that. Uh, okay, let me look at the questions that came in here. Is the speech recognition limited to yes, no, uh, or would they be able to have a more realistic conversation with the character? How would they branch? Okay, so what happens in speech recognition? Uh, that is usually, it's using artificial intelligence. And the way that speech recognition works is that you have collected a large, large database of potential outcomes for that conversation. Because right now, all of our clients have such a small pool of data that they're working with, we can't really create a very sound artificial intelligence or voice recognition system today. I mean, we could do it on a small scale, but uh, every every time I've gone into developing that platform and trying to build that, it's about a, a $1 million investment for each <laughs> each conversation. Uh, we're hoping that changes, and, and we're hoping with Siri out in the market that a lot of those technology companies that build those platforms like Nuance and IBM was involved in the whole kind of uh, Jeopardy thing where they had the, the computer playing it. It was using artificial intelligence and voice recognition. So that technology does exist. It's just very expensive yet to do. So the branching comes into, uh, let's say you build a series of questions or conversation pieces, and then what we suggest is you stop in the middle of that conversation to say something like the insurance company says, we want to make sure they're stating their name, the purpose of their call, uh, the company they're from. So the insurance companies build a simulation where they, they might go two layers into the conversation and then it does a self-check to say, did you say this? Did you state your name? Did you da, 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 da? Because they're, they're very uh, strict about compliance. And so the person will say yes or no. And if they said yes or no, it's going to branch them picking up on the yes or no. Or the same thing with the multiple choice. You know, did, you, you know, did the customer respond positively or do you think you handled that call well? So the branching is all still kind of a manual, physical thing, not an automated thing. Uh, need to, no need to read this. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> doesn't your translation into text and grade, grading outcomes come close to voice? It is only because we're not saying something back to them, though. That's the, the key difference. It is picking up on what they say and the key word. And maybe over time, because I have 1,800 stories, we'll be able to collect enough of that. But right now, we're just starting out, and they're launching it live uh, in the next uh, month or so. So we don't have enough data to build a true kind of artificial intelligence yet, uh, that, but we could down the road. Uh, Dialog Coach and Speakeasy have voice recognition. Yeah. Uh, again, it is somewhat challenging, though, if you've got customized scripts. Uh, I agree with that. There, the technology is out there. It's just incorporating it into it to where it's consistent and feels very conversational. And I don't want to incorporate it until it's appears to be very natural. I mean, there are systems out there, but they're not as natural as I would like them to be yet. Uh, are the minutes based upon minutes per training, or is this in regards to minutes of users? This is for anybody that's accessing a script live from their phone. So if you're doing a click to call, you're dialing a number, you're listening to something, it's all however much time they're connected to that call live. Uh, is there an average length of call recommended to maximize level engagement? Uh, that really varies. If it's a straight podcast, I would keep those fairly short. Or uh, what we're recommending to people, if it's a longer podcast, break them into uh, sections and then build an interactive menu that they access first. Because let's say it's they're five minutes into it and they can't listen to the whole thing. You know, do they have to listen to it from the very beginning? Well, no, not if you build, if you chunk it up into smaller, like three to five minute sections, and then break those sections into. Um, ways that they can get access to it by just pressing a button on their phone. But from a conversation, you don't want to go too deep because, you know, real conversations can take a whole different spin if you're, you know, go five to six minutes into it without maybe taking a pause or asking them to stop and answer some kind of uh, self-check type question or say, now, now you're going to go into this part of the conversation or, or kind of take them into a different branch of the conversation. So then it can be longer. But I wouldn't go too deep before you do some kind of break or self-check. Uh, how do you charge? Uh, OK, good question. If, we, if you go over your 500 minutes, 
we do an incremental per minute charge. Uh, so let's say it's 515 minutes, it's seven cents extra per minute you go over. Okay. Oh, thank you. I didn't. All right. Uh, how do you chart? Okay. All right. Let me make sure I'm getting. Let me just scroll back to see if I missed any questions. Okay. I think I did. I miss any? Did I miss anybody's question earlier in the um, session that I didn't get to? No? <laughs> so uh, what we offer, or what we're going to offer to all of you that since you joined this live broadcast today, is if you have a script or survey or sample audio content that you want us to put into what I call our sandbox, uh, you can do that. Uh, you just send it to us in a Word file, or if you already have the audio files created, we'll create a little sample for you because we know Nobody really has been using their phone and the audio technology like this, and it's, it's kind of a unique um, approach, but everybody that tries it out, they're really surprised at how easy it is to work, or it starts to generate a lot of ideas of how can I engage somebody using voice and audio. So, you know, we like to step out and say, let's, let's just uh, give us your content, and we'll, we'll let you test it out for free. Because um, that helps us, you know, kind of stretches our creativity and our imagination if we get kind of a a challenging script that somebody sends us or figure out a way to uh, write the script so that it keeps that person engaged. Uh, how many how many simulations users can access a, how many oh simultaneous users can access a podcast? Uh, there's really no limit on this. It's a it's a fairly robust system. You know, unless by some weird chance everybody's hitting submit button or they're dialing the number at exactly the same time. Um, it might push somebody out, but then they just have to redial. But there's really no limit on that. Uh, do you need the content in script format or just the content in a PDF? Or PDF or Word document is fine. Uh, did I see that we could experience a sample of the system? Yes. So if you just go to knowledgeshift.net and go to Voice Simulations tab. Uh, here, I'll just let me get out of here, and I'll show you where that is. And there's a there's a variety of them, but Moby Roleplay, this page, Moby Roleplay, is probably uh, the easiest one to get to. It has a variety of things. So you can have fun. You can say um, uh, how to handle your psycho boss is one. Uh, if those of you have a psycho girlfriend out there, you can practice breaking up with her. Uh, <laughs> so you can have a lot of fun with these. Uh, we actually did a... Um, uh, St. Patty's Day, we said, you know, have an interview with a leprechaun and win a pot of gold. So we've done that as a little promotion. Uh, at Halloween, we said interview a vampire uh, and win a Kindle. So you know we, we like to have fun because, like I said, we have improv professionals that actually work for us and do voiceovers and help sometimes write the scripts. And uh, so we, we really want to you know, occasionally use these to have fun and, and use it in a live setting. You know, that's what we tell a lot of sales organizations that are using this. We say, hey, think about using this at your next sales event where you pull somebody out of the audience, make them go talk to a simulated person, and then have them come back in the room and they can play that recording for them. Uh, what was the name of the application that builds the pod? Oh, Audacity. And it's free. So if you just Google Audacity, uh, you'll see that you'll get quickly, it's, it always shows up at the top, so it's a very popular audio recording and editing tool. And, and what I would suggest, too, is think about what are the ambient sounds that you can put in your recordings. For example, with the school kids, we built them playing at recess. And so Audacity lets you build multi-track audio where we have kids talking to each other. You can hear playground sounds in the background. And then the school bell rings, and they all say, oh, it's time to go to class. So think about if you're in the, in the real environment, what would be going on around you? And, and paint that picture audibly. Uh, yeah, WavePad's another one as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, just get creative with it. If you ever listen to Garrison Keillor, which I'm a huge fan of, Prairie Home Companion, it's all audio. You know, and think about the sound effects that you can put into your recordings. 
Uh, we're working right now with Volvo Cars for their service dealers, and we're going to be building in kind of repairing noises, you know, mechanic noises running in the background for their uh, role plays that they're going to have with their customers that come in to get their cars serviced. So really painting that picture using your ears instead of your eyes. And that really helps kind of set the, the stage, literally, for um, those audio experiences. Uh, so any other questions? It's been a good group, especially at lunchtime. <laughs> so what did you guys eat for lunch since I'm starving? You know, what, is anybody eating something good at their desk right now? Oh, Snickers! Oh my God, popcorn! Yeah, I, I could see eating popcorn for lunch. Ooh, rice and beans, very healthy. Chuck, oh man, jelly beans! Wow, you guys have a variety of diets here. <laughs> oh, it's not 